Guys, I'm tired. The holidays have beat me up. I'm frustrated and I don't wanna make this video. It's also about a topic I didn't even wanna do. Every time I do a water cooling video, there's always those guys that think they're being original by saying, hey, I had an idea. Use antifreeze as a coolant. Well, it's anything but an original idea, and it's also a bad one for a few reasons, which we'll talk about in this video as well. But we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and roll the, uh, the little logo first. With its unique freeform modular system, the new Mastercase Maker 5 from Cooler Master allows unparalleled flexibility with its adjustable internal layout and exterior customization options. Learn more about how you can start customizing your own case by following the link down in the description. Okay, this is antifreeze. Now what I have right here is a pre-mixed 50-50 antifreeze, which means it's already pre-mixed 50% with distilled water. Uh, so that means this is actually a little bit diluted in terms of how strong it would be compared to getting a, just a pure gallon of antifreeze, which you would already have to dilute. So keep that in mind. Now there are some disclaimers here on why you shouldn't use antifreeze as a coolant. The first one being is this one is ethylene glycol based. And if you're using a PETG tubing, well the G stands for glycol. And you don't wanna use glycol based coolants with PETG tubing. You can have chemical reactions, or actually you will have chemical reactions. It's not a you may have, you will have. The difference is depending on the mixture and how concentrated it is and what type of uh, coolant it is with the other inhibitors that are in there, it could happen within as quickly as seven days as some chemists say, with a little bit longer out in the future depending on the, uh, the concentrate of your mixture. If you just pour straight up antifreeze with no water in there, it would probably happen a lot faster. We will do another video with a test where we take some PETG, put it in a jar with some, uh, some of the antifreeze in it, or maybe I'll just cap off the ends and pour some in a tube. We can try that as well, where we see exactly what happens. But that's not the point of today's video. I've got a prediction here. Well, we'll get, we'll get Coconut Monkey's prediction too. I predict the temperatures will be exactly the same as what we're using over here right now. What do you think? I think it's gonna melt the stuff on the inside. What stuff? The internals, it's, it's gonna clog, it's gonna melt it's gonna the clog the up the motor and stuff, the pump. That. Why would this? Because the glycol. But what? I don't. Okay, what's your reasoning behind that, though? Because the motor's steel. Oh, like the blades are too. Like, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, no, the D5 it's plastic, but it's not. It's not um, glycol plastic. Okay. It's just like it's just like um, I think FDP or even maybe a, a acetal. I kind of wanted to see catastrophic failure. You would. I'm sorry. Now, before we can see whether or not it actually works better or worse than blah 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 product, we need a baseline. Now, this right here is. Um, the same exact fluid that I have in Skunk Works right now. This is the newer generation of the um, pastel fluid. Now what might look like brown tubes here, you can see the coolant is nice and green still. I just want to point that out. The, the tubing is actually discoloring because it's that's reused tubes. I want to point that out. It's still nice and green. But we're going to do a baseline here. I've got a 5930K in there running at 4.4 gigahertz. It's 4.38 effective because I believe the uh, the B clock actually steps down to like 99.8 instead of being at 100. But anyway, I digress. It's not important. We are going to go ahead and run a stress test here on A to 64 Extreme for 10 minutes. We're going to record the temperatures and then we will drain this, clean it, put the press tone in there, and then we'll see if it's any different. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start the test here. See, it's a trial version. Because I'm like, we got no budget. We got no budget for this. This this stuff right here was already like 16 bucks, which put us way over budget for this video. So, all right, yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and start the test. We'll come back in 10 minutes. Okay, so we just ran 10 minutes here on Ada Extreme. Here are the temperatures, 75 for the CPU as a socket. And then here are the core temps. I need to take a picture of this too, because I'll never forget. But 74, 61, 76, 66, 74, and 62. That's quite the swing, but that's just how Intel works. Um, also, to keep in mind, these temps seem high for water. We are stressing CPU, FPU, and the cache. So we are literally hammering the CPU for everything it is worth. This is actually a stability stress test, not just a heat generating test. So it also means that my 4.4 gigahertz clock is stable, which I already knew, but there's our baseline. Now we're gonna take the press tone, we're gonna clean out the system, put this in there and see how it does. If it doesn't do too badly, I might leave it in there for long term and see what happens. But then I'll come out and see that the soft tubing melted and leaked everywhere someday. This is how I flush out my systems here. I always have a drain plug connected to the lowest point of the loop, which in this case happens to be where the pump is. I take an empty jug, place it somewhere. In this case, it's just gonna go like that. It's 
staircase holding that down. I will crack open the valve slowly. And as I start to take, open, take off the lid here, let some air in, you can see it starts to go down. Now, if I wanna keep that from going too low, what happens now, I'm just gonna keep adding water to this and eventually this will completely flush itself out. I have to face the camera, mister. Mm -hmm. My tube is flopping around here. All right, we are pretty much empty with the exception of a few drops caught in like a tube right there or whatever, and that's fine. It's just distilled water. Um, side note though, check this out. I noticed that, like I mentioned earlier, the tubing was starting to look a little brown. It actually turned purple. Crazy. Never really experienced that before. Like I said, I know the coolant didn't change color because it stayed clear in the thing here, but the tubing actually turned like purple. Huh. Yeah, I can just fix that by going with purple fluid. Who cares? We need to now make sure everything's tight. And we are going to pour in our ethylene glycol mixture. I'm not even gonna call it antifreeze. We're gonna call it what it is. It's ethylene glycol. And uh, yeah, I think it's green, I think. Yep. Ooh, that's neon green. Well, yeah, it's antifreeze. What'd you expect? Well, mine, I mean, it's pretty. mine is pink. It's like alien Oh, green. it's like, like, <laughs> what is it doing? It's like off-gassing. What is yeah. happening here? <laughs> Guys, we're getting some sort of a reaction here. <laughs> Guys. Oh, dude, you can actually see all the glycol in it. Look at it. Zoom in on that. Yeah. Do you see this? I'm taking a risk here now of like, destroying an X99 system for you guys for the sake of science. Look at that, look at the reaction. Is that eating away at the O-ring? No, but it's like coming up from the bottom there. Yeah. That's weird, let me go ahead and turn this on real quick. Wait, the, what the splashing you wanna cover first, right? That, okay, that's crazy. I was not expecting that. That's gotta be the, the ethylene glycol. Okay. Dude, you can see it, like, right there. It almost looks like a gel. <laughs> it's crazy. I don't know, man. This feels very too idiot -y. Like, this is a bad idea. I could have told you that. That should make it all the way through now. There we go. Look at that. That looks... Well, it's aerated right now. I didn't put this thingy back in there. Oh. Uh because -huh. I'm not entirely sure that this, like, does anything other than restrict air Diffuse. water flow. Uh -huh. It's supposed to be a diffuser for these tiny bubbles. I don't know how well it works. You can see the bubbles moving around, but whatever. So what do you think your five best qualities are that you bring to Jay's Two Cents Media? Um, well, that's, I haven't thought about that. You're oh, hired. So. All right, guys, here we go. It's up, it's running. We've got our uh, antifreeze ethylene glycol mix in there, and we're gonna go ahead and run the same test again. Ambient temps are the same. It hasn't really gotten any colder in this room. And we are uh, gonna run it for 10 minutes and see what happens. So. Started it. It did not initially explode, which is a good thing. The only difference too is I took out this tube from inside there. As I showed, I took out these internals on this reservoir. It, it was, it's dumb. There, there was dumb internals on this alpha cool thing. It works just fine without it. It doesn't vortex, so we're good. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and just, we're just gonna let it go. We're just gonna let it go. Let it go. Okay, here, we're done. It ran for 10 minutes and four seconds. Um, but anyway, just to kind of compare the temps, I'll put them up here side by side, but here's what they were. Our CPU uh, temperature as a package here reached 76C, previously hit 75. Guys, all these temperatures are plus or minus one or two. So honestly, it went exactly as I thought it would, right? I said that, didn't mm -hmm. I? I said it would be exactly the same as the temps you saw before. The question here is longevity. Will it, will it hold up? Uh, it, I would think it would. It's designed to handle extreme temperatures like in your car. Um, the question is, how is it gonna react to the different metals and the different plastics that are in here? Not so much the metals. The metals, it even says right here, at least this one here, it's got its corrosion inhibitors, right? That's good. We, we want that in our systems. But what's it gonna do to the plastics? That's the big question. Um, I don't know what'll happen to the soft tubing with this stuff. I'm kind of feel like I wanna just let it go and see what happens, but then I don't feel like having it leak and destroy the system anyway. Um, so anyway, this video was probably completely pointless. You guys keep asking me, can you use antifreeze as a coolant? And the answer is technically, yeah, but we also proved you could use milk and you could use orange juice and you could use Gatorade. The question is for how long and what's gonna happen in the long run? I don't know, I'm not willing to test it. So this video was entirely pointless. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. Bye.